A crosscut sled is probably the most useful table saw sled you can possibly have. They allow you to effortlessly batch out consistent cuts without having to measure each and every time. Hi, my name is Eric Spensley, and today I'm going to show you how to make this simple crosscut sled on Spensley Design Co. The very first thing that I need to do is make up the fences that are going to be for the front and the back of the sled. So let's grab some scrap plywood and take care of that. Jigs are a perfect place to use up scraps you might have laying around because nothing needs to match. You could absolutely use multiple different species of plywood, just use up all those random offcuts you're guilty of hoarding for years on end, but luckily I've got enough of this 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I'm going to use. I want these fences to be just a little under 4 inches tall, but I'm going to first rip some oversized strips to run 4 and a quarter inches wide. I'm doing this because I want to laminate multiple pieces of plywood together to get a thicker and more stable fence. And with those strips ripped to the rough width, I can crosscut them to their rough length. Not really going for anything accurate here quite yet, so a quick draw on the circular saw should be just fine. So now that I've got those individual strips cut down that are going to make up the fences, I need to laminate all these pieces together. So what a lot of people will do is clamp them down to a really large level or straight edge or something, but I'm just going to do something a little easier and clamp it to my bench because I know that this surface is perfectly flat. It's critical that your fence pieces actually be straight or your crosscuts won't be accurate. The lamination process is super easy. I just dumped an ample amount of wood glue between the two boards, spread it evenly with a plastic squeegee, and stacked up the boards. This new workbench that I made a few weeks ago has a laminate top, so wood glue won't stick to it at all. If you want to check out that full build video, I'll leave a link down to that in the description below. I should also mention that I've got full plans for this project in both Imperial and Metric if you're interested in making the sled for yourself. Those plans are available at spenceleydesigncode.com or at the link in the description. Once that glue's set up, I could start removing the excess by ripping it on the table saw to get one side perfectly flat, then running it back through the table saw to get the other side flat. A quick nudge of the fence to get to the final width, and these fences were cooked to perfection. So I've got the fence made, and the next thing I want to do is route a spot so that I can put a stop block. Now on my old fence that I still have left over from the very first crosscut, I guess this, not the very first, the second crosscut sled that I ever made, I used T-Track to keep that stop block being able to slide back and forth. But just like I talked about on my workbench build where I got rid of all that T-Track because I absolutely hated it, I do not want to put T-Track in this crosscut sled. So what I'm going to do instead is route a groove along the top of this fence here that's going to be in the shape of a dovetail. That way I can use all those dovetail clamps and accessories and everything like that. And it's a lot easier and doesn't cost money because you don't have to buy the expensive aluminum T-Track. But enough bashing on the T-Track, let's just route that groove on the top. And real quick, I think I forgot to mention that I made another fence for the opposite side of the sled. You can see it right here. Anyway, the dovetail bit removes a lot of material at one time, so to make things a little bit easier in my router, I'm going to first remove the bulk of the material with this straight bit. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? With that cleared out, I can grab my dovetail bit and set it to about 3 eighths of an inch deep to route out the final shape. The bit leaves a perfect slot for the hardware to slide into, and you can see how well it holds the stop lock. But now, I need to switch gears, and the next step is to make the base. And to do that, I'm just gonna grab some scrap plywood that I have already laying around and utilize this. So the size does not matter. That's what she said. Ha, I don't get it. One bit. 
I'm just gonna use this particular piece here because I want a fairly large sled, but you can follow these exact same steps to make any sled of any size that you want. Now I could absolutely cut this down to a smaller size, but honestly, I think the size is pretty good. I don't have a miter saw in my shop, so I'm gonna use my table saw for pretty much all my cross cuts. So having one this big will be pretty good. So I guess I don't need to do anything to this and I can just move on to making the fence. A keen eye would notice that I left the ends a little bit rough. That's because I knew that the router bit would leave a little bit of tear out, but I can easily cut that away and score off one of the ends. Over at the bench, I can line the fence to one end of the base and mark out the final length. And then, uh, cut it to that final length. So now that I have both of the fences of the sled made and the base itself, I guess there's really no fancy name for that, just the base. The next thing they need to do is make the runners that are going to allow this to sit into the miter slot of the table saw. And to do that, I'm just going to grab some scrap hardwood. Something like walnut or maple would be an ideal choice here. Something that's not really going to move a lot throughout the seasons. Everyone's miter slots on their saw are going to be completely different size. So I always recommend making a rough cut and then slowly sneaking up on a snug fit. You want it to be able to fit inside the slot, but have just a touch of friction. Next, you need to figure out the depth of the slot. Mine is right at about 3 8 of an inch deep, but I don't want the runner to bottom out in the slot, so I'll use my setup block on the table saw and then bump the fence over just a little bit. So now you should have two strips of wood that you can easily slide into the miter slots on your table saw and they have virtually no play, but they still slide fairly easily. And now we need to attach these runners to the base of the sled and I wanna show you a little trick for that. Now because these runners do sit slightly below the surface of the table saw, we need a way to basically raise these up as we attach the base on top. So I'll start by removing the runners from the slots and then I'll insert a few washers inside of each miter slot. Now, if you don't have washers, something like coins or nuts would also be a great option too. Just as long as whatever you're using raises the runners above the surface of the table saw. With the runners placed in the miter slots, it's now time to attach the base of the sled. Now this is one thing that is 100% personal preference. It really doesn't matter where you set this. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do, run it like this, and so you'd have, you know, maybe about six inches on one side of the blade and about 25 to 30 on the other side. That's one option. Another option would be to perfectly center it so that you'd have about 18 inches on either side of the blade. And I mean, really you can do anything you want. Now, me personally, I think I'm gonna offset mine just a little bit because I typically want to cut something a little bit longer. So I think this offset method is gonna work pretty well for me. And in fact, that's exactly what I did on my old crosscut sled and I really liked it. So for me, I'm gonna go with this offset idea, but you can do whatever you want. To attach the runner, I laid down a little bit of CA glue. And to make sure that it's cured quickly and I can keep working, I sprayed some activator spray on the base and pressed the two together. It is not critical that the base is at a perfect 90 degree angle with the runners, but just try to get it close. After about 30 seconds, I can remove the sled with the runners attached. It's probably overkill, but I'm gonna further secure the runners to the bottom of the sled with some pre-drilled and countersunk screws too. And with the runners attached, I can use my broken flush trim saw to get them to the final length. While well, I give all the pieces a quick sanding, I want to take a second to thank Donald Sarvis and the rest of my Patreon supporters for making all of this possible. My Patreon supporters get exclusive merchandise like t-shirts, coffee mugs, and sweatshirts that are not available anywhere else. 
And most of all, they're some of the folks that are helping me get one step closer to being able to quit my day job and pursue this channel full time. If that's something that you would like to support, consider checking out my Patreon page, link down in the description below. But as always, there's no pressure, so let's just get back to the build. All right, with everything all sanded up, we can go ahead and start attaching the fences. Now, the back fence is a little bit more challenging, so I'm gonna skip that for now, and let's focus on the front fence. Now, one of the questions that gets asked a lot about crosscut sleds in general is, does the position of the back fence matter? And the answer is no. Nothing is ever gonna be referencing off this, so honestly, you could put it like that and you're gonna be fine. You're just gonna lose a little cutting area. But the whole point of this back fence is that once you cut through the sled, these two pieces are gonna be able to pretty much just flop back and forth. So by having that back fence on there, once you do cut through the sled, this just kind of holds those two pieces together so they don't move around. Because I'm attaching the fence with some screws, I slid the sled backwards and marked out where the blade will cut just to make sure that I don't put any screws anywhere close to this area. Then I can flip the sled over and clamp the fence in place. I don't like to use any glue when making crosscut sleds just in case I want to remove the fence at a later time, but I do throw a lot of countersunk screws in to keep it nice and secure. With the first fence on, I can reposition the sled on the table saw and make the first cut. And yes, the sled sticks a little bit right now, but some wax later on will get that moving perfectly. This cut should end a few inches away from the opposite end of the sled, and I can slide the sled back and attach the main fence. I'll first clamp it in place and then fire in one screw. Not all the screws, just one. This gives me this pivot arm that makes it super easy to adjust to a precise angle for the fence. Now all I need to do is get this back fence perfectly square with the blade. Now there is something called the five cut method, which is basically a big math formula that tells you if your fence is perfectly square or not with your blade. But in my experience, as long as you just have a large square, you can just set it up against the blade and the fence and get it pretty close. So that's what I'm gonna do. Take your time here because you really want this to be as accurate as possible. But once you're satisfied with the position, carefully slide the sled backwards clamp the fence in place, and then fire in the rest of your screws. Now, you can make that cut that goes through the rest of the sled. Just make sure that your hand is nowhere near where the blade comes through. Oh, my... I just realized I forgot to do probably the most important thing, and that was make the little gap for the sawdust to hang out in there. I'm an idiot! You're an idiot! You're an idiot. Well, luckily this isn't glued together, so I'll just have to unscrew it and fix it. So remember how I told you not to use any glue when attaching the fences? This is exactly why. By not using any glue, you can always adjust the fence at a later date instead of making an entirely new crosscut sled. Anyway, with the fence removed, I routed a small chamfer on the bottom side of the fence. And with that done, I could pop a screw back into the base until it was just barely poking out, and I could fire in all the rest of the screws. So with that chamfer, pieces will stay flat up against the fence, and even if you make a ton of cuts and sawdust is all over the sled, it will just slide out of the way into that recess. Now without the recess, sawdust will get wedged behind your workpiece and it'll throw off the accuracy of your cuts. Anyway, these edges are kind of sharp on my hands, so I'm going to hit everything with a roundover bit just to soften things up. Now with that, the sled is just about done. 
However, there's an important safety feature that I definitely want to add to this. So your natural reaction is when you're using a crosscut sled, just, you know, to grab it, put your hands wherever, push your piece across. But if you're not careful, you might put your hand exactly where the blade is coming, which is basically just gonna cut your finger right off and you're not, probably not even really gonna see it coming. So what I like to do with all my crosscut sleds is I make an extra little block that just gets adhered onto the back. That way, not only does the blade have a place to sink into, but visually you're gonna see it and think, yeah, probably shouldn't put my hands right there. Just another reminder and it keeps you safe. I'll attach this block with some more wood glue and then also use some of that CA glue from before and the activator just to help speed up the process so I can keep working on this today. And I know this is a debated topic, but I like to coat my crosscut sleds with a little bit of hard wax oil just to help them slide on the saw better as well as offer a little bit of protection. You can definitely skip this step, but I always like to take the extra time to do it. And if you want to learn more about this finish or any of the other products or tools that I use during this video, make sure to check out all the links down in the video description. Now let's see how it turned out. As someone who got rid of their miter saw a long time ago, my table saw is by far my most used tool in the shop and this crosscut sled is going to make it even more useful. You can set up repeated cuts, tackle larger cuts that a miter gauge can't accomplish, and you know for a fact that your cuts are going to be dead on accurate every single time. I hope this helped you out and if you want to make a sled like this for yourself, make sure to check out those plans linked down in the description below. Again, big thanks to all my Patreon supporters and I'll see you on the next one.